first of all, I just wanted to say I, I hope everyone is is uh, healthy and 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 bearing up under this um, sheltering in place. And and it's very fortunate for us that we've been able to. Um, uh, that we recently that we were able to finish our beta and Leonor in March before the um, cancellation started taking place, and and that we were able to film it. Um, and this this project actually uh, started. Uh, oh, we had the, had it in mind more than five years ago, and the um, the idea was to uh, to look at at Beethoven and and try to find out what was uh, what was original about him and and what did he inherit and um, we thought that the best way to do that would be to uh, explore the Gavo um, and uh, Bouilly Leonor um, because most people n knew that um, Beethoven's librettist took his libretto from this um, uh, from this French um, librettist, we, but no one had ever heard the opera, um, and it was written in 1798, and so we went about um, finding it, creating an edition of it, and then um, performing that, which we did in 2017, um, and then um, with the idea that we, we would perform it, and then uh, then later we'd perform Beethoven's own Leonore from 1805, and that um, that somehow this would this would um, we'd we'd find where it would take us and 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 how it might enlighten us and and eventually by filming both of those projects we'd give people the opportunity especially those of you who who may not have been able to go to the performances um, to compare the two and to see um, for yourselves what uh, to react and oh what did Beethoven inherit and and what um, and and how was he so so wonderfully original. Um, and so uh, we're starting the project by, by giving you the opportunities to see the first two movements of Gavot's um, uh, Leonore and Bouy's Leonore, um, which is the Marceline aria, and, and then the duet with Giacchino. And then to look at the first two movements of Beethoven, which in the 1805 version are those same two movements in that same order. And uh, for me, this this starts it off, showing us really how close um, these two things are aligned, and how and how Beethoven um, uh, inherited something that um, and did something very similar with it. Um, and as we as we continue, pardon me, um, as we continue over the course of the next. Um, uh, next installments, we'll also look, of course, at, at things that Beethoven did that Gavo didn't do at all. Um, so this is an opportunity for us to to look at it together. It's the first time um, I've been able to see the the two side by side, and uh, and to get your reaction and to allow you to ask us um, what uh, what was our experience of it. And um, I guess with that, maybe Pascal, um, since part of the project here was to um, to do the, as, as much as possible to do uh, the Gavo with the same cast and with the same um, set and the same director as we would do the Beethoven, um, so that the differences would really pop out at us, um, and and Pascal, you were a part of both productions, obviously. If people have seen the excerpts, um, what what was your first reaction, um, maybe to the Gavo, and then first reaction to the Beethoven, or or after having done both, um, how did you? What was what what jumps out at you about the project, which was so um, so special? Hi, can you hear me? <laughs> yep. Okay, um, I I had heard excerpts from the Beethoven when I when I first studied the Gavot, um, and to me they seemed so different at the time because the Gavot was uh, much more, much lighter, much anyway for my character was the music was much uh, much more French in a way uh, in in a lot of ways, um, and so that that I felt like that made my character a little more. Nonchalant. Je ne sais quoi. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, nonchalant mm -hmm. and and um, more of a 
dream or like she her feet were not exactly on the ground the whole time you know until she realizes that i mean i don't want to give any spoilers but until she realizes that fidelia was actually not a man uh, <laughs> but and then i studied the beethoven two years after so the the gavel was kind of far in my mind um so and i found it i realized that they were very similar because it's just the same it's, the same phrases. I sing the same phrases, but in German. But the, the music was much more substantial in the texture. And uh, so it made my character a little more down to earth and a little more realistic. And um, so for me, it was very different. But then I listened to the, the, the there was a, a broadcast of the Gavo on the radio, on in uh, the Canadian radio station and I was like wow it's the same thing <laughs> in the end <laughs> it's really the same thing <laughs> well I, I definitely have my ideas about um of of what it, ways in which they're they're so much the same and and a few wonderful ways in which they're different but music that Jacquino has when he says in in the end he says you know I'll caress you I'll, I'll I'll love you and all these things um and as 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 you've both alluded to it's so much lighter um and he and Gabo and, and we he do that do that beautifully um whereas yes as soon as as soon as we hear Beethoven begin yum bum Bum, bim, bum, 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 bum. We hear this minor chord and we thought, oh my gosh, that's something um, not only yearning in her text, but a little bit more, more dramatic about it. Um, and, uh, and yet, uh, the, yet the structure, it's as if Beethoven takes, you know, the, the structure of the music is the same in that it goes from um, the first aria from the, um, the minor to the major section and back to the minor section and then to the major section again. And they do it on the same words. The major section is, well, the, the opening section is about yearning for this possible relationship with Fidelio. And then the major section uh, is on the words hope or hoffnung or espoir. And, and, um, and so it's so, uh, it, it, they follow each other so closely. And in the, in the duet, I mean, the it's both of them are such long pieces structured around these two interruptions of of knocking at the door, and with the um, in between those two, in which um, uh, you are actually maybe uh, Pascal, you'd like to say um, to you are left alone for a minute, um, and in each you start to think about Fidelio, and your music changes, and. Um, but what about the, can you also describe how you, you lead him on even while rejecting him um, in the duet? Yeah, I think it's, um, I think ladies do, do this all the time without <laughs> knowing. <laughs> Uh, and it's not about leading on, it's about, you know, letting someone off easy or not just, you know, not hurting someone's feelings or um, in some cases it's, you know, not getting insulted in the result of letting someone off or anyway. Um, but it, there, uh, she, she doesn't dislike yet Jackino. She, 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 she likes him. She just likes someone else better. She's at least an ideal of what someone else yeah. is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the um, it's there's the both both composers, but I'm particularly I've made it in the mind the way um, you the way the musical gesture um, sort of cuts him off, but she's as uses his words. Yes, yes. Then we'd be a pair. Uh, I realized some things as I was watching it that I didn't even while I was conducting it, and I was wondering if some other people have thoughts about. Um, the how the characterizations were different, whether in the music or, or whether by the actor singer.
uh, I love yous are what Marceline imagines her children will say to her. And it's not actually her saying it to um, Fidelio. She imagines her life with children and when they start to speak, they'll be on our knees and telling us that they love us. And so that's, that's, um, she and you know, tell Fidelio that she, she loves him in that area. You know, that also brings up an, a, a, the issue of, of the way Beethoven uses the C major. Um, and that is something that we'll find throughout the opera. I, um, there are, when, uh, when certain characters um, talk about love um, in uh, whether it's Marceline in her first aria of, of Beethoven, of the Beethoven, or whether it's uh, Leonor later or and what in her own aria or even in the section of the, of the, of the duet uh, with, with Rocco. Um, and then of course, in the, in the final um, section of the, of, of Beethoven's, of, of the whole, of the third act, he always uses, uses C major in a, in a, in a sort of structural way. And um, to, to come out of the overture in C major into your aria in C major and, um, is is I think an important gesture that that people may not realize consciously, but but by the end of the opera you've realized it unconsciously, and so it's a little odd to me that that later he he felt that he had to change and put the duet first and then your aria later because it doesn't preserve that connection from the from the overture to the um, uh, uh, to your aria. There's also, uh, in, if you, if for our listeners who who saw the Gavo video, there is a little end of the overture, and one of the things you may have noticed about the end of the Gavo or overture is that it has those those wild scalar motions going, climbing enthusiastically up the scale, uh, which of course is is something that Beethoven used um, so. Uh, uh, so dramatically in both um, the Leonor Overture Number Two and the more well, the better known Leonor Overture Number Three. Um, so, uh, so there's a kind of, um, you know, a composer's sophistication of, of structural sophistication that's going on there too, um, beyond um, uh, the, the and in in response to the text. Well, the text really, it feeds everything that you do, right? And you're, you try to not act. If you, if you act con contrary to the text, then it has to be a very strong choice, you know? Um, but you always try to make sense of the text and the music because the music will also inform um, if it's major, minor, if there's a, if there's a pause, what, what happens in the, what happens in the three bars that you're not doing anything. You're not like, you know, you're not waiting for the next thing that you say, you have to feed it. So to answer your question, I, I don't know if I, I mean, it, it's like you, you're, it's, it's like if you're dancing, you're just responding to the music and letting it feed your imagination. There's another place, you know, where, where you, um, uh, in the duet with Leonore that uh, happens later in the Beethoven, that is parallel to a duet in the Gavo, but which is not in Fidelio. Um, and you're, you do speak about having children together and you actually speak directly to Leonore about having children together. And, and Beethoven sp specifically um, gives us a kind of hesitant, what is she going to say? She's going to say, oh, we're going to be not just, you know, we're going to be f four of us, Rocco, you and me and a baby. And, um, and, then, and then she takes off at a faster tempo than, mm -hmm. uh, than she has been. And so that's, it's interesting that that moment um, Beethoven does pick up on, but in a different place later in the opera. Yeah, true. Too, too, um, so. And it's, it's well, a just taboo also to talk about you know, babies, because you know how they're made. So right. you know, I think she gets a little in, uncomfortable. Right, right. There's that hesitancy in the, in the solo violin and cello and with you, yeah.
Well, I think um, there are there are some uh, serious musicologists. I think it's David Charlton who may have um, been one of the ones who 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 said that he probably did. But the the interesting thing is, of course, that the in the theater in Vienna um, there were there was a lot of of French opéra comique being done there. But we and and opera comiques of Gavot being done there. But um, we don't know, in fact, that um, we. I mean, we know that uh, the Gavots. Leonora was not done in Vienna, but that doesn't mean that many scores weren't sent to Vienna and looked at in Vienna and in the library that um, might not have, were not performed in Vienna. So um, the uh, so and Beethoven's familiarity with French opera comique extended back to his life in Bonn when when he was playing in the orchestra there and they were doing Monsigny and lots of things. So um, the so I think that the speculation is is and some, I'm sure Tina could speak more authoritatively than, than me to this, but is both the context of the likelihood that there might have been a score around, but then also these, um, uh, a lot of these musical responses to the text. I mean, some of them are, are kind of standard. You might expect many composers to, to react similarly to a text. And then there are other things where some things are in the same key, or there's even a, a musical motif, um, uh, that are that similar um, that that might that suggest that suggest that um, and yet uh, on the subject of musical motifs I, I think one of the wonderful things that Beethoven does for instance in the duet you know um, in uh, Gavos is, is rather straightforward on the downbeat Talion, pum, 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 starts it out but Beethoven starts it out um, with a rest and you don't have any sense of where's the pulse it's pum, 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 pum. And so you get you you have this um, the Jacquino's unsure and there's uh, that there's you don't know what's going to happen because you haven't been given a beat on which to stand you know um, and like that's the beginning of the Fifth Symphony yep yeah, for instance for instance so <laughs> you like that so, trick so, you like that trick <laughs> so um, uh, that's uh, but. Um, but it's a it's a it's a great speculative question. We may never know and um, uh, precisely. But uh, I think um, it's it's fun to and finally now to be able to look at them right you know right side by side and and say hmm maybe. I want to say that I watched it first the two of them in the right order on Friday when I got the link, and I really thought that the Gavo seemed so lightweight and the Beta one was so much more substantial. And then today I did the same thing. I watched them again in that order. And I didn't feel they were that dissimilar today. <laughs> there was just something, you know, really came, came through of the parallels more. Good. <laughs>
Um, and he built finales uh, of a sort that you don't have in right, the Right, right. So I think this is probably a kind of standard conversion. And I haven't looked at enough of these, but it would be interesting to see whether German Zingspiel sort of Italianizes opera comique as a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if, um, even if some of those French had that little Italian at Jute Cacassere by themselves too. <laughs> but on the larger scale, I see what you mean. And that's, a, that's very interesting. Well, we can expand upon that um, next week when, um, when we talk about the, the trio and the, and the quartet.